I am Sagar Jatani from Department of Electrical Engineering, GMIT. In today's session, we are going to start our new chapter on the Z transforms. As we had discussed in our all previous sessions, in all the discussion, we had considered only one kind of system, which is in the nature of a continuous. All the system that we had discussed in the past, all the chapters, that all systems are a continuous time, linear time invariant systems. And to solve this system, we had solved many differential equations as well as we had used a many continuous time domain signal processors to solve all the differential equations easily. But in our chapter number 5 of a discrete time LTI systems, we had also discussed some discrete systems also in which to, in which particular systems we are using uh, the discrete time systems and to solve the systems we are using the difference equation okay the differential equation and the difference equation both are different okay so to solve the discrete time systems we are using the difference equation but in the continuous time domain to solve the differential equations we are using the laplace transforms as well as sometimes we are applying the fourier series as well as the fourier transforms also means to solve the particular time domain continuous time domain signals uh, we had done a many method or we had learned many method for the same but what happened for this z transform method or uh, what we are using or what method we are using to solve the this kind of a uh, difference equation so for that we are using the z transform and the inverse z transforms uh, in today's lecture we are going to discuss uh, the main thing is that the why we are using a z transform for the discrete time systems as we have other methods also to solve the different uh, equations that is a discrete time Fourier transforms we will consider the same topic in the same chapter okay so to solve this equation we have to follow many different tedious processes okay now to find the solutions easily we are converting it to the frequency domain by taking the Laplace transforms means all the continuous time domain signals can be solved by the Laplace transforms as well as the Fourier transforms. But after simplification, after applying the Laplace transform, what we had done in the previous session that the after simplification in the frequency domain, we convert it back to the time domain. Means as you know that the some calculations or some solutions are very easier in the time domain and some solutions are easy in the frequency domain. So as per our convenience, we are uh, jumping from one domain to the another domain. So same content we are discussing here. So the some calculations are easy in the time domain and some in the frequency domain. Okay. So same I have said that is written here in the same slide. Okay. So as per our convenience, we are using them. But these all calculations methods are continuous time domain only. So what about the discrete time domain calculations? So for the discrete time calculations, we are using the same Z transforms. What is the procedure to apply, to find or to solve the discrete time calculations or discrete time domain signals? So to solve the discrete time domain or a different equation, we are directly applying the Z transform. When we apply this continuous time domain uh, difference equation, we will have, after applying the Z transform, we will have algebraic equation in the z domain then what we will do after con converting into the algebraic equation in the z domain we will solve it as per our convenience and then after taking the solutions we will get back to the time domain means how we will get back to the time domain from the z domain just applying the inverse z transform to that z domain signals and we can come back to the time domain difference equation so this entire cycle is used just to solve this difference equation which is in the time domain okay now as we discuss above that the z transform provide a simple and the systematic method with complete solutions step by step with a consideration of a initial condition okay initial conditions we are discussing the laplace transforms also the same conditions we will discuss in the same chapters also okay now, the similar to the Laplace transform, the Z transform also has a unilateral as well as the bilateral consideration. Okay, 
what do you mean by the unilateral and what do you mean by the bilateral simply let us just revise the same thing unilateral means we will have a output of a system at particularly one side only either on the positive side or ideally on the negative side but practically it will be on the positive side only and same if we take the non uh, practical or non causal systems then we can say that the bilateral systems also can be possible in the z transform or a discrete time domain all the signals that i have mentioned here are in the continuous time domain signal which is in the not which is not a uh, overall discrete time domain signals okay but it seems like a continuous time domain signals okay now to convert any different equation to the z domain we have to use there's two standard definition of a z transform okay there's two standard definition we will use to convert uh, any continuous time domain difference equations to the z domain equation means uh, in the continuous time domain uh, what we are doing now we are just uh, converting our signal or our function from time domain to the frequency domain similarly we are going to uh, apply the same z transform concept here means we are jumping from uh, continuous time discrete difference equation or continuous time domain signal to it to, uh, to the z domain signal but all the signals that we are using in this particular chapter are discrete in nature all the signals are discrete in nature okay so we will use this standard definition uh, for both the unilateral as well as the bilateral the first definition is a bilateral z transform uh, we know that the bilateral means it will have a limits from a minus infinity to infinity unilateral means it will be from zero to infinity if we are considering the causal system okay so now uh, what is the definition for the bilateral the definition of a bilateral is that the x of z is equal to summation from minus infinity to infinity x of n into z raised to minus n the same thing or similar equation we had done in the uh, our fourier transforms also but here instead of a z raised to minus n we are using e raised to minus e omega in the laplace transform we are using uh, overall e raised to j sigma similarly okay now sigma plus j omega sorry and now in the unilateral what we are using we are using the x of z is equal to summation from n is equal to 0 to infinity x of n z raised to minus n here there is only difference in the limits of a summation okay so that's why both the overall definitions are almost same but the limits are different now as we had already discussed in the laplace case or fourier case there should be uh, some limitations also or we have to take care about the region of convergence also because if we are not taking the region of convergence then we cannot find the uh, unique solution of a particular system because sometimes a uh, same system or two different system has a similar output but if we know the region of a convergence of these two output signals which is in the z domain in the nature then we can distinguish both the signals means it is visually same but actual output or actual the pole zero combinations are different that's why we are using the region of a convergence each and every time i will teach uh, that particular thing how we can find the region of convergence of uh, any uh, difference equation okay so uh, what region of convergence says that the for any given sequence which is in the z transform may or may not converge each and every time means uh, that will may not have a finite boundary it may be uh, tends to the infinity okay either it is a positive infinity or there may be a bilateral means it will may be the negative infinity means it will never goes to zero ideally okay now the second point is that the if we put the points from z plane and if the transform is exist then it is known as a roc of a transform means if you have one system which has some finite output in predefined region of a, or pre predefined z a z plane then we can say that this particular this particular system or this particular function has a finite roc means finite output means that particular output are bounded with a specific region or specific number of points on the z plane that's why that particular region is known as roc okay same roc concept we had learned in the laplace transforms also because 
Laplace transform has a two quantities. First one is a real quantity, and the second one is a imaginary quantity. And if you put the both the values of s, which is a complex number, s is equal to sigma plus j omega. Means if you put the different values from the s plane, complex s plane, to this sigma plus j omega, then you will get a different values of the Laplace transform. So similar thing we will use in this chapters also. Instead of s, here we have we have the variable as a z. What is the value of z that we will discuss in the uh, at the end of our chapter or on the next session? Okay. So now uh, concepts are very good for the z transform. Means it will be very easy to convert from difference equation to the algebraic equation. But there is a, some limitation. The limitation is that the frequency domain response cannot be achieved and cannot be plotted. Why? Because we know that the time is inversely proportional to the frequency. But in case if you want more samples, then the frequency of a particular repeating signal may be very high. So the particular time period will be very less. So each and every signal will comes uh, very nearly to each other. And if we have a bilateral systems or a bilateral uh, functions, then there may be a a signal which is in the nature of a discrete which will seems like a continuous time domain signal so we will also take the same example that why where is the limitation of a z transforms okay so this line you have to remember we will uh, utilize this thing also in some of the examples okay now let us discuss the relation between the fourier transform and the discrete time domain uh, z transforms so dtft says that means discrete time fourier transform sequence of x of t is given by the x of omega summation from minus infinity to infinity x of n e raised to j n omega z transform as well as the discrete z discrete Fourier transform has some relation which is given here. Now this is the relation between uh, the z transform as well as the overall discrete time Fourier transform. How we can consider both as an similar? So see here, this is the definition that we are discussing the discrete time Fourier transform. And for existence of a DTFT, the above summation should be converged, means it should be uh, absolutely summable. Means the function that is in the difference in the mean of uh, discrete time domain signal, uh, that is a uh, x of n. So this x of n must be absolutely summable. Means we should have some finite value, and all the finite value should be summable means we can uh, do we should do the sum of that practical thing means if one of the answer is infinite means it is unbounded then we can say that the our function is not absolutely summable and we can say that the our dtft may not be may not have any relation with the z transforms that's why we have to say that the uh, our function should be absolutely summable now the z transform of a dtft can be given by the standard definition that is a capital X of Z that is equal to summation from minus infinity to infinity X of N Z raised to minus N. So the same equation we had seen here in this particular slide. But see here, here I have used the small X of Z and in the case of DTFT we are using the capital X of Z means we can say that the small x of z is equal to capital X of z in case of relation between the z transform as well as the discrete time Fourier transforms. Okay, In this case, we are just taking as a common that x of z which is capital and the small x of z are same. Previously, we are considering as a different. Okay, But in this case, if we compare or if we, if we want to find the relation between the z transform and the DTFT, we have to consider it as a singular. So I am just writing here the x of z is a singular. And the definition is also similar. But see here, the, the particular definition of a z transform and the DTFT relation says that it should have a bilateral in nature. Means our definition should have in the bilateral thing. Because we know that the Fourier transform has a magnitude graph. But that particular graph means a spectrum. The magnitude spectrum is has a even symmetry. Means if we have a signal 
which is in the nature of a discrete time domain but and all the signals are present on the right side of a spectrum then there should be a similar spectrum on the left side which is uh, the exactly mirror image of the right side functions okay that's why we are using the bilateral summation in this particular case means if we want to apply the z transform or if you want to find the relation between z transform and the fourier transform discrete time fourier transform then we have to take the bilateral summation okay and the small z that we are using here in this case that is equal to r into e raised to j omega and where omega is a frequency of a sample and r is a constant which is show the magnitude where our function is intersecting the vertical axis okay so this particular z is equal to r e raised to j omega we will discuss in the next session over some of the example what is the meaning of r into e raised to j omega and how this particular point that is r into e raised to j omega comes that we will also discuss so so this is the end of our today's session uh, revise entire lecture or these notes that i have given here if you have any doubt then you can contact me the content of our next lecture is that we will discuss some basic example and some basic points for regarding the unilateral and the bilateral z transforms okay and then we will practice some of the examples also that i have given here we will understand what is the meaning of a region of convergence in the meaning of discrete discrete time equations uh, but before starting this examples you have to refer some equations that i have already sent it to the google classroom so just revise all the equations all the taylor series as well as the maclaurin series that i have given in this particular images and then uh, we will start this z transform for the some common sequences okay so this is the end of our today session we will meet soon in the next session